Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, June, for the uh, nice uh, and uh, wonderful introduction. My name is Hazwan, and I'm the co-founder of Doctor on Call. Let me uh, give you a quick introduction. Uh, we started Doctor on Call about four years ago um, uh, as a virtual online consult platform where we connect patients to doctors and uh, and complete it with a medication delivery component straight to your doorstep. And um, spending uh, a lot of time in other industries, uh, there is a few reasons uh, why we started Doctor on Call. Um, and, and these are the problems that me as a patient and an average uh, consumer faces uh, on a daily basis. And I thought, okay, maybe there's something we can do about it. Number one, how can I get a proper um, qualified medical advice from a doctor if I can't make my way to the clinic, right? There is all sorts of reasons or circumstances where you can't um, make your way to the clinic. You know, I probably my wife is away outstation for work and I had to take care of three kids. I really can't go down the road to see a doctor. Um, uh, I, I work late, I can only uh, see a doctor next week because I'm too busy and by the, by the time I finish work, um, the clinic is closed. Right? All sorts of these reasons are are just uh, just happen every day and this is delaying uh, our uh, uh, schedule to see a doctor. Second reason is um, the whole convenience uh, factor. Um, we live, uh, our life revolves around technology banks uh, banking uh, has literally moved into our moved into our smartphone um, the phone company is living in our smartphone if you think about it the restaurants and um, and the movie theater has taken a real estate in your smartphone but everything has moved into your palm and um, what about my health needs right how why can't i take care of my health uh, from my uh, using my phone right so then, uh, so so that's the second reason, and 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 I think it's just, um, yeah. I th I think uh, you know uh, that that second factor is just timely, and 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 we are all living in this world where we expect things to be fast, to be on demand, and the last one um, is the cost, or the healthcare cost itself. Um, I. Uh, be I spent 10 years in consulting, working with large cor uh, corporates, banks, uh, insurance, and uh, as well as uh, a couple of conglomerates and utility companies. Every single one of the clients are whinging, were whinging about the rise of the healthcare cost. Right? One of my clients even spent a close to a billion ringgit a year in healthcare. Why? Why is this happening? Right? And I, I don't understand. I was an outsider. I don't know what's going on behind that. Uh, rise in healthcare costs. All I know is I go to the clinic, I get medication, I step out, right? Or if I'm hospitalized, then I go there and I step out, right? Because everything else is paid by my employer or my insurers. So today, um, I'd like to address this, um, this, 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 this huge issues for us uh, employers as well as many payers out there in terms of the healthcare cost, right? These headlines you see. For years, you, you've seen this uh, for for years. Thirty percent rise in medical inflation, um, year on year increase in healthcare. Uh, this is, I mean, this is not um, news for many of us, right? Uh, and and if you see the actual numbers, um, you know, thirteen point six percent medical uh, uh, cost inflation in Malaysia as compared to general inflation of about 2.4%. That is, you know, that is really high. And, and if you look, uh, you look at it, we are among the highest in this part of the world, right? Um, and, and some argue maybe it's because our healthcare cost is, uh, because it's still affordable. It's, to, it's starting from a low base in the first place. Hence, the, the healthcare inflation is high. But the fact is a fact, right? The hundred dollars you have today won't get you the same thing tomorrow. So, uh, so let let let's see how we can peel these uh, issues one by one, and and 
and and work it through. And in from analytical point of view, when there is such a um, rise in uh, cost, right, is a there can only be two reasons, right? Either you know is the cost getting more expensive, right? Is a Malaysian healthcare is getting more expensive, or more there are just more people who need healthcare. The cost is potentially remains the same. It's just that there are more people who needs it. Right. So we um that's a, so so we talk about the 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 healthcare cost, right? Are we talking about the doctor's fee? Are we talking about the drugs? We're talking about treatment. Right? And uh and from the that the, the second factor of whether you know, uh, more people need healthcare. Is it really more people who need healthcare? Yes, the population has grown. Like we have more people now, uh, or are we just getting more sick? Right, we have more sick people now. People are getting sicker, right? Uh, and 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 needs a lot of medical attention. Now, right, let's see if we can peel this onion one by one and 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 understand where is the root causes before, uh, as an employer or payers, right? We shape. The healthcare program that is going to be sustainable and and long lasting, not just focusing on the short term curbing of medical cost. Okay, the first one. How about the doctor's fee? Right. If this is not um, a new issue uh, among the medical community, our consult uh, the 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 GP's consultation rate has not changed in the last twenty seven twenty eight years. It ranging between 15 to 35 and some people say it's what a shame doctors spend their entire life studying and and going through ridiculous training to to save uh, to learn how to save people to save lives and are being compensated in this manner and some people compare it to a rate of a you know haircut right so and and if you look at the region obviously some of the Countries that is, has even a lower GDP or lower GDP per capita than us are spending more on doctor's fee, right? So it's, is it right to say that doctor's fee is driving the healthcare costs? I don't think so. Let's see if there are other factors. How about the drug prices, right? Um, it's potentially there is an inflation in, in drug prices, but based on the study, our drugs uh, prices are among the cheapest in the world. We are ranked 48 out of 50 countries that they studied. And I don't think um, this is uh, unsubstantiated, right? Uh, I have uh, seen uh, someone who uh, flew in from Indonesia to buy his cancer drugs in Malaysia because it's half the price. He spent 8,000 ringgit to get the whole set of medication in Indonesia, right? but he, he costs only half the amount here, right? So, so he rather like fly in and spend less on the whole thing. So, so this just shows that we have good access to uh, pharmaceutical drugs, and the cost is still among the lowest, even compared to our nearest peers, right? So, does this drive the healthcare cost up? Potentially, but most likely not. Let's see if there are other reasons. How about the number of people who need healthcare? Right? How fast are we aging? Because we assume that you know the older you are, the more uh, healthcare needs you have. Right? This is ten years ago. It's a nice uh, uh, curve uh, where most of the population is below the age of thirty. Right? Fast forward uh, five, ten years. How does this look like? Okay, and you see, uh, just in five years' time, uh, how that uh, chart has progressed. And this is uh, right. So this is us now. Like we have more people above the age of thirty. What happened in the next twenty years? Twenty thirty, twenty forty. Look at how fast the curve, the, the, the chart is fattening. So by the 2040, we have majority of us will be over the age of 40, right? And, and if you look, this chart will give you a clearer picture. By 2050, which is 30 years from now, more than half of us will be above the age of 40, 
right? And as you can see, some of the like, diseases are getting younger and younger. Many people in the, the age of 30s are getting hypertension. And I'll share with you some of those facts. Right? So maybe this is one of the reasons why it's contributing to this rapid increase in healthcare costs. People are just getting older. Um, let me give you an example. Uh, if we've, we've heard about the American healthcare system, it's always being heavily debated. And, and, and some people think it's in a mess, right? Um, and uh, it's very costly to get treatment in America. Um, uh, and some ridiculous amount compared to the amount we are paying here. But why are they in this uh, situation, right? If you think about it, they are now is in the, is the, in the year 2040 for Malaysia. 47% of their population is above the age of 40 hence they have bigger healthcare needs right regardless of how the system is designed right they just have more demand and um, sorry they just have more demand and not enough supply hence driving the cost up and waiting for uh, going to the doctors is uh, is going to get longer and longer and it's not as easy to see a doctor uh, in the US and and if you think about it that's why their system is so clogged and in 30 years from now, it won't be our children or grandchildren who will suffer first. It will be us if we don't make any changes, All right? We are going to be like most of us will be in the 60s, 70s, and 80s by the time uh, uh, we by 2050, and that's when we need the most, right? We need healthcare the most. We need uh, a lot of uh, uh, medications and 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 and, and health advice. Uh, to, to, to just stay active. And, uh, that's, um, and, and, uh, and if you think about it, this is something that needs to change now, right? So if we don't shape this properly from now on, right, we'll be suffering this and going down the same path as some other countries who are suffering from aging healthcare population, uh, right now. Okay, um, let's look at some other factors, right? Um, recently, uh, Ministry of Health released a health and mobility surveys, and I think you have seen some numbers, uh, staggering, staggering numbers. Uh, one in five Malaysians uh, suffering diabetes, and one in three have hypertension, uh, and one in three means 6.4 million uh, adult population have diabetes, uh, have hypertension. That uh, that numbers are uh, some people uh, I mean are being shared in many forums, but you should uh, dig down deeper and realize among these people who are diabetic, if you look at this chart, seven out of ten Malaysians in their thirties have no idea that they are diabetic. Right? This is even worse. This is even dangerous. People are living with diabetics for years, going uncontrolled, and causing all the other medical conditions. So, so there's no, we used to think that diabetes is the illness of our parents and grandparents, but it's getting younger. This is what I meant. And this is not acceptable. If you look at hypertension, more than half, only, only half are aware that they have this hypertension. You know, the mantra about no news is good news, it's no longer applicable. It's not good news in this situation. People need to know if they have this condition and they need to be empowered how to take care of their health as early as possible before this go down to the even more dangerous health, uh, uh, health situation. Right. And many of us employers out there know that at the moment they are diagnosed with hypertension, diabetes, their medical costs, their needs would increase and in some of our historical data it goes up by more than twice than their average counterpart. But this is not even the worst thing. I'm going to walk you through a patient, a typical life cycle of hypertension patient and how it can go wrong. So I've shared some facts. Let's see this a micro example of one uh, typical patient life, cyc uh, life cycle. Right. Let's look at this.
look at this. Um, this is Zainal. He's 39 years old. He's been diagnosed with hypertension. Okay. It's unfortunate for him, but he he's detected it and uh, his doctor helped him uh, diagnose it and he's prescribed to take daily medications on his hypertension. Okay. And what happens next? So he started his new uh, journey, go to the clinics every month to get their medication refilled. Uh, next, you know, he's human, he's not used to it. Sometimes he forgets to take medication or sometimes he ran out of medication. It's not the first, that's not top of his list to get the medications early. So he would have this uh, non-compliance of medication. Right? He started like, missing his medication. But six, uh, every six, every three to six months, he goes for mandatory checkup. That should uh, help him. But uh, with him, you know, he can be a very hardworking, busy man. He might miss this uh, appointment. Right? And uh, typically, when he has a regular headache or a fever or any symptom, he just go to any clinic or pharmacies, get his medication, and 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 try to treat his condition, taking Panadol for his headache. Uh, over and over again and this is when he started going wrong right he will have a lot of unmonitored symptoms and the doctors that he sees may not have the full view of his health condition what's next this is so typical right he's a very hardworking employee typically works late and have no time for exercise right so this is I mean I'm guilty for this too and I think many of us are guilty uh, uh, for this too right and when he's too busy, he won't have time to take care of his diet, right? So his meal consists of mamak food, you know, like from breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Because that's when he clock in at 8 for breakfast and then um, and finish work at 10. The only option he has is mamak, right? So this is the road that is going down. And fast forward 10 years, if he's going down this path, right, that's a high chance he's going to be down with stroke, Right, and 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 this is this is uh, this is quite common. We all know this. We all um, uh, we all have heard stories about how our uncles or like, friends are down with stroke. And now the story of stroke are getting younger and younger. And I don't have that uh, stats, but it's just scary to think that you can be uh, down with this condition that used to affect more older people. And let's look at this, another perspective. So over 10 years, right, how much does a company spend on him? Right? So there is a typical diagnosis cost, doctor's visit, medications, lab screening. That comes up to about maybe 200 to 300 ringgit a month. 200 to, and then over 10 years, that accumulates to about 30, 29,400 ringgit. It's... Um, it's a cost. It doesn't look so bad because a lot of companies actually allocate more uh, budget for healthcare, uh, more more than this amount, right? So this is the amount that he would typically spend over ten years. Unfortunately, when his condition is going uncontrolled, when he is down with a stroke, his treatment costs blew up. Like this year, treatment uh, hospitalization costs for uh, stroke. Go can be as high as 31,000 ringgit. And that if you see like that, that one time cost that he spent is like more than his entire spend for the last 10 years. And this is year 2020. If he is starting year one now in 10 years time, the cost won't be 31,000 ringgit anymore, right? Based on that inflation rate that I just shared earlier, it'd be about 100,000 ringgit. And as a payer for healthcare or employer, are we ready to fork up this amount of money in 10 years' time? And most likely, we are all still in the same organization, and this is not a problem that we can just defer. Let's deal with it in 2030. If we don't do it, we don't fix it now, right? It will just go down, and, and the, the, the future is here, right? You can already predict it. There's no secret. There's no mystery about it. So what can we do, right? Um, what can Zainal do? Or what can we as employees empower Zainal to do when we see this kind of situation? Right? So let's see. How can this be different? Um, 
So he's, uh, he's now, so in the hypothetical future of Zainal, right? So he's diagnosed with hypertension at 39. He starts taking his medication daily and he can visit his doctor. He visits his doctor on a quarterly basis. Every three months, he receives a reminder for his appointment so he won't have missing appointment, right? This is important, right? Because everyone is busy and you need reminder to, to do all this, uh, to, to, to not miss your appointment. And he is given a device, a blood pressure monitor to monitor his vitals regularly. How many employers or, or, or companies actually pay for their employees to have this device at home? This blood pressure monitor is vital, it's crucial, right? I mean, if you don't have this device, um, you can't measure your blood pressure. And, and, and we always say to the employees, right, what gets measured gets done. Right? So in this case, uh, I mean, I've spoken to so many um uh, typical, uh, I mean, companies that, oh, uh, do you provide a blood pressure monitor if, uh, if the, for the hypertensive for high risk employees? And then the typical answer would be, uh, actually, we don't cover that. Um, this is, uh, this is on the exclusion list, right? But if you think about it, it that's not the point. The point is, Zainal may not may not spend i mean on on this device and he doesn't have uh he's not monitoring his condition which can go down the old zino the, the 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 wrong path right and uh for me then he gets reminded to on his medication regularly right uh, this is important so that he compliance his blood pressure uh, uh control and he won't miss so much of his medication, right? We try, and this we are we are uh, doing this now because all of these are, uh, are enabled, uh, can be enabled by technology now. All we need is to empower our employees to do this. How about his regular consult with the doctor, right? So now with the availability of teleconsult, he can check on his uh, check out with his doctor once a month, even though he's busy, he can find that ten minutes to have a call with the doctor, and when he's too busy. What if the doctor can give him a call too? So rain or shine, a doctor will check on you, right? And this would this would help from him going uh, down, like going unmonitored uh, on his complication for month. And whenever he feels unwell, he will given he will be given an extra attention given his uh, uh, situation. And uh, he we can detect any complications early. How about uh, so if required? The doctors can even escalate his case to a to a specialist, either virtually or in person. But now we know that you can speak to a specialist virtually. Right? This is even more uh, convenient. You don't have to wait for long to get an appointment, and then you can do it like, as fast as possible instead of delaying your uh, health matters. What's next? This is the most important part. There must be a, a real shift. In the way uh, we do healthcare, right? There must be a clear health outcome, and it must be rewarding, right? He has a he Daniel must have a clear health goal setting, not vanity, not just any vanity uh, measures like weight and and BMI, but a real clinical outcome on his health condition. He needs to get his blood pressure under control. He shouldn't develop any other complications if he's going on this trajectory, and he can get rewarded for it. And, uh, and, and, and many companies should start thinking of how to shape this kind of program so that he is driven to achieve it. And the most important thing is, I think, I don't think this exists right now. His doctors should be rewarded too for meeting his target. Right? So this drives the doctors to make sure that he doesn't miss on his medication, to keep checking on him, to monitor. And, and we are all human. We, I don't trust that Zainal would be so compliant to go to go see his doctor on a monthly basis. So there must be a nudge from medical uh, uh, practice from the providers to actually make sure that he is getting better and getting healthier. Right? At the end of the day, what will happen is he will then live a much safer, happier lives. And this should be the goal uh, for the any healthcare companies, for the employers, for everyone, right? And unfortunately, this has not, I mean, this is currently a challenging task because we have limitations in the traditional setting and all these things can be solved one by one 
with the digital uh, enable enablers, technologies, and there's all sorts of things out there that can help us as a, a payers or employers of healthcare to, to actually enable our members or our, our employees to go through this journey so that we, we can actually help us and help them live a happier and safer lives. We don't have to worry about him in 10 years time going down the wrong path, getting hospitalized and, and hiking up, you know, the medical cost then, which can be 10 times more than today. So I just like to summarize my whole point here is our vision, Dr. Onkali, we want to bring health back into the healthcare. Let's do what healthcare is supposed to do, right? Uh, some people use the term uh, right now, a lot of focus is on sick care, not health care. So we want to bring health back into the health care. What we mean by this is, right, I think many employers or payers are too focused on curbing short-term medical costs. Um, there's a lot of pressure, you know, squeeze on the doctor's consultation fee, uh, drugs prices and all that, but we may not be focusing on the right thing. We need to focus on the health outcomes, right? If the patient have to take that, they have to take that drugs instead of trying to get them to take less drugs. But the key thing is when the doctors prescribe that, uh, uh, that drug, it has to follow on with a clear health outcomes and this can make it sustainable in the long term. Secondly, intermittent care, lack of continuity. Only 25% of people today goes back to the same doctor. Many of us, 75% of us actually goes to any clinic that they see down the road and then get their treatment there. So because of that, the, the anyone who gives them treatment have no view of uh, their health profile, uh, have that, uh, a, a 360 view, 360 degree view of their health profile. And um, if you think about it, this is something that has the, the industry is trying to solve for many, many years, right? A lot of uh, uh, hospitals or clinics have their own electrical, uh, electronic medical record and they try to keep their patient's data there. But if you think about it, the only common de denominator across pharmacies, hospitals, doctors and specialists are the patients, right? So we need to find a way to put the healthcare uh, history data back into the patient's hands so that whenever the patient go, they carry their health data with them. And that would make a lot of... Uh, treatment and, 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 and by the doctors uh, 10 times easier. No more delays in seeing doctors, no more delays in checkup because um, now a lot of things can be done on demand. Right? You can book your doctors for in-person appointment, you can have them uh, on teleconsult, depends on what your situation is and this, this technology is here today. You don't, this is not future. Right. No more uncontrolled conditions. So anyone with uh, non-communicable diseases like diabetes and hypertension, they should be um, managed. They should uh, stay on track. Right. We, what we want to do is prevent. We want to spot the red flags early. That's a whole. That's why seeing a doctor often, virtually, even virtually, is crucial to make sure that this patient actually doesn't develop and go down a more dangerous path. And the last one is, for many companies, you don't, back in the days, just launch health programs, Biggest Loser, Wellness Program, but there's, not, there's no clear ROI for it. And every health, and what we want to make sure that our corporate clients, that every health initiative is calculated um, with a clear uh, outcomes and, and, and not just vanity metrics, like, you know, how much weight loss, how much... Um, um, you know, BMI has changed. That's a whole, for healthcare. There's whole other metrics that needs to be measured, and most of it you have to work with the doctors or practitioners to make sure that this outcome is realized. And the way we want to do it, uh, the patients are rewarded, the doctors are compensated. Right. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much, Azon, for the presentation just now. And I would like to give kudos to you and your team that you've come up with this um, idea of um, bringing healthcare closer to the people and adapting to the um, IR 4.0 where technology is vital nowadays. So it's a very good initiative by you and the company um, yeah, to bring um, people closer to the healthcare system. Maybe like nowadays people are very scared to go to the doctor sometimes, but now with 
having the um, technology at, on your hands, it's, it makes them like, there's nothing to be afraid of. And they're always there to help you. So um, before, uh, while we are waiting for the questions to come in from the audience, remember you can always post your question on Facebook, YouTube, or even uh, if you are participants of Fairbanks, you can always chat with us and post your um, questions there. So um, my question to is, uh, my question to Hazwan. So since you started this um, uh, initiative, what are the biggest challenge um, that you might have um, experienced um, on Doctor and Call? Yeah. Okay. The the very first um, challenge would be the um, the adoption and the, the the trust in the system, right? We were the first one to introduce a platform. We need to gain trust of doctors and the patients. Uh, most uh, and, and 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 that's the hardest. Um, we, um, the, uh, I mean, it, it took us a while to you know start slowly introducing um, everyone on the needs for telehealth. Um, we realized that um, you know eighty eighty percent of the people start their healthcare search or healthcare journey online. Um, you know, and and we want we want to make sure that we are available for them whenever they do that, so that they don't go and start googling self medicating, and those are the main problems that we want to solve um, uh, initially as well. So that's when we started to introduce our health content blogs, forum Q and A, because we just a lot of people like to ask health questions, and and that there's some. Um, uh, all sorts of questions that many of us maybe here would think is common sense, but to the 70% of Malaysians out there, it's something that they they have trouble understanding, right? So we want to close that health literacy gap. All right, that's a very interesting answer from Hazwan. So um, yeah, I think I can agree on that. Where actually um, making people to familiarize with the technology is something very hard to do because since. You are the first one to actually introduce this. So uh, we have questions from the audience from Wake. How common is an online consultation made available to public with a present in person the clinics? So is it a rising trend? So what do you think about it? It is a, a definitely a rising trend, um, uh, no doubt. Uh, we have started about four years ago. It was a slow start. But um, as I can see, it's quite natural for people to be um, studying the healthcare journey online, um, uh, googling, um, right? And 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 in the traditional uh, setting, there's no halfway point between googling and going to the clinic. And as I mentioned earlier, going to the clinic is probably not the easiest thing to do for many people, right? There's all sorts of reasons. So Dr. Onko comes in in between and and introduce that. Okay, what if I have this? What if I have this concern? Rather than um, you know asking friends and families and unqualified, uh, uh, unsolicited advice, right? You know, might as well you talk to qualified doctors and get the uh, uh, your initial concern addressed and see whether there's a need for you to go into the clinics or hospital. And some of the common ones can be addressed online. And recently, uh, MMC has come up with a guidelines to allow a lot of follow-ups and uh, patients to be done uh, by doctors and specialists uh, online and the the rise the, there was a about 10 times spike uh, in terms of the use of telehealth over the uh, MCO and COVID-19 period uh, and and that's a clear trend uh, and and because of that uh, people are saying okay the, uh, people are starting to try the telehealth and many of them find it quite convenient to just start the healthcare journey online before they actually make a decision to go in in person. All right, so I can totally relate to the uh, situation where sometimes if we we feel uh, we, we like to self-diagnose, right? So we just go and Google. Um, sometimes we just have a rash. Suddenly you come out like diagnosed, but then is it even true? But doctor on call is here to always help you to always um. There will be always doctor to help you on the consultation part. So we have um, another question from Tsum. It is interesting you are comparing the US and Malaysia, especially with this age issue. The concern with seeking healthcare while older will be caused as well. The Malaysia is different from the US because it's a two-tiered health system. If Dr. Uncle is trying to reach an older population, are you guys considering working with the Minister of Health to accept older patients who will typically seek KKM clinics as well? 
So yeah, it's a very yeah, based on uh thank you uh Chung um based on our interaction with uh the the the, the ministries and also a few uh state government, there are a lot of uh, older uh, patients out there who seek uh, treatment in clinic kesihatan and uh, in of KKM and I think uh, last year's uh, KKM introduced a concept of virtual clinic. Um, right, so I think uh, KKM is moving in the right direction in terms of uh, allowing these uh, patients uh, to 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 connect with their doctors uh, virtually. And um, uh, and what we see is uh, understand that uh, some of the older population they have challenged with uh, technology. In our working with, um, uh, we work with the one of the state uh, government for the B40 program, which uh, many of them. Are uh, in the uh, in 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 uh, in the older population, right? So we even make it convenient for them to to reach out to us through uh, through a hotline number where we can uh, patch up a doctor to speak to them, right? All right, thank you so much for the question just now. So yeah, I think um, Dr. Nicole is being uh, is collaborating with the Minister of Health a lot in terms of um, introducing this telehealth um, initiative. Okay, we have a question from City. May I know if Dr. Ancol will expand to the neighboring countries soon? Um, still understand that this covers outpatient only. So how about inpatients? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, City. Uh, uh, interesting questions. Um, yeah, inshallah, we will uh, expand to uh, other countries. Um, but the idea is, um, as you, if you remember, there was a news come out last year that... Uh, uh, Malaysia healthcare or doctors are, um, are ranked among the best in the world and I think uh, no one would dispute that. Um, right now we are receiving also quite a number of uh, patients who are seeking advice from our doctors from uh, uh, other countries uh, and uh, in terms of our expansion to other countries we will see in terms of model how we can help serve our neighbors from Indonesia for instance if they need uh, to speak to doctors from here or they need um, you know uh, some medication that is not uh, immediately available from uh, uh, from Indonesia yes we have that uh, in our plan we are still doing some groundwork in terms of expansion does this cover outpatient only um, it's outpatient and we just onboarded a, a group of specialists um, uh, and and they are uh, using this to follow up with their post uh, their, their follow-up patients or patients who just discharge from hospital and they need to do follow-up they can use telehealth uh, platform for uh, for this purpose All right and and in terms of uh, uh, covers uh, uh, you know uh, di different employers or insurers have different coverage uh, 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 for for uh, for outpatient or inpatient. Yeah. Okay, thank you, City, for the question. We still have more questions from the audience. You can keep on sharing your question to Hazwan. So, a question from Eileen: Is it possible for you to show no symptoms if you have no diabetes? Okay. What do you <laughs> think, Hazwan? Uh, I <laughs> I think I didn't make myself uh, clear. I'm not a medical doctor, and I don't think I'm qualified to answer this question, Elaine. Um, uh, but uh, maybe I'll, you know, you drop uh, uh, your contacts, and I'll get like you know one of the uh, doctors to help you answer these questions. All right, I think Elaine, you you know where to go. It's doctoroncall.com.my. Yes. You will get a direct consultation to the doctors. Okay. Um, we have another question from Lukash. How long does it take to do the assessment for a large corporate? Okay. Um, uh, for there, there, there's uh, various uh, programs that we have. Uh, depends on the size of the companies. Um, uh, typically, we come in, uh, we can do a, a basic health risk assessment for a, a small to medium-sized company in terms of understanding their population. Um, but uh, for uh, large companies, um, we can uh, come in, uh, takes probably like two to three weeks to, to, to gather the data uh, from your claims or your medical records data in terms of uh, understanding the population and setting up that baseline for, um, for to shape the proper healthcare programs for them. And we work with a network of uh, doctors, uh, specialists and, 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 uh, and, and medical experts uh, to, to do this. Okay, I think we have more questions. So um, it's from Nor. May I know who are the doctors at Dr. Nicole? So personally, I'm very curious as well. Where do you get your doctors? I mean, are they, do they come voluntarily or anything? Yeah. Um, 
um, the we, we we don't hire doctors uh, directly. Many of the doctors who work with us actually uh, do it as a, a part time or semi uh, permanent. Um, they they use this as a channel, so they uh, so they they can come from uh, private practice or uh, private hospitals, or, and then they do it uh, uh, during their uh, uh, during their available time. And we are now moving to a model where you know a lot of uh, clinics and doctors out there can actually set up their own practice uh, online. They can come on board and like set up you know whichever clinic you're from, and then like you offer that service to your customers. Right. So we have various models uh, for this. So basically, the idea is like um, a virtual clinics or hospital, is it right? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Um, the next question. <laughs> Another question from Lukesh. How to stay young like you, Hazwan? Tell me. <laughs> okay, this is getting <laughs> uncomfortable, uh, but uh, I don't know. All right? Maybe, you know, we... Uh, some of just don't look old. <laughs> okay, <but I laughs> or maybe I should put my, you know, uh, pictures from 10 years ago. I think I know the, the answer to it. You know where? Where, where do you get the answer? It's doctor on call dot com. Yes. Why? I believe Thank they you, have Jim. their own doctors there. They will give you a consultation on how to stay young. Okay. So do you have more questions from the audience? Okay. Um, I think that's it from um, the audience. Uh, so Hazan, do you have any um, final words for the audience that are watching you today? And maybe you can share how how do they can actually go to to seek consultation from dot on call? Is there any apps or websites? Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, thank you, Lukesh. Um, we provide our uh, services, um, all the services that you mentioned, from online consultations, booking, medication delivery uh, on doctoroncall.com.ma. You can uh, uh, go there. Uh, and in terms of our corporate program, you can reach out to us uh, for at corporate at doctoroncall.com.ma, and then we will uh, we will uh, engage with you. And I believe um, the whole my whole presentation today is. Um, uh, is is a plea to the industry, right? We are we always see this as um, a short term thing, right? You know, we, when we started Doctor on Call, it's a digital health platform. Yes, it provides virtual consultation, medication delivery, but that's just a starting point, right? What the more I, uh, I mean, the longer I spend time in healthcare, the more things I discover, and I think the way we are, our trajectory in terms of healthcare spending and and healthcare a state of our health now is not uh, sustainable for long term, and we should uh, work together as an industry from regulators, uh, employers to see how we can actually make a difference, and 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 change the way we uh, chart our healthcare journey forward. All right, thank you so much, Hazwan, for the sharing and also for the Q&A session just now. So I hope um, Hazwan will continue to inspire all young minds out there to keep on innovating, especially in this new norm. So thank you so much again, Hazwan. Um, and for you guys out there, stay tuned because we have more session after this. And see you guys later. Bye-bye.